Hi everyone and welcome to this year's video on the tips and predictions for Leaving Cert Agricultural Science, the 2025 paper. So we'll start off by having a quick look at the exam layout for 2025. Uh, the layout will be the same as last year, meaning that the paper is worth 300 marks. The total marks going for your Leaving Cert Agricultural Science grade this year is 400, but you have already completed 100 of those marks by handing in your IIS or your Agricultural Science project. The paper is going to be two and a half hours in length, and that is at both higher and ordinary level. So the paper itself is split into two sections, section A, which is your short questions, and then section B, which comprises of your long questions. So in section A, there will be an increase in choice. So you will have 12 questions provided to you and you will have to answer 10 of those. Now, within some of those questions, there will be internal choice. So in four of those questions, you will get a choice of A or B. Section B then, your long questions, there will be an increase in choice here also. So you will be given six questions and you need to answer four. And similar to section A, there will also be some internal choice in there. So in two of those questions, you will have some options. So lots of choice and lots of options. So just be really careful when you're reading the instructions for each part to make sure that you're answering enough questions. For the timing of the paper, I would suggest uh, that you spend about five minutes at the start of the exam checking the paper, marking out the questions that you feel would best suit you, the ones that you want to answer. Now, in Ag Science, we've already said that you have two and a half hours. It's not one of those papers where you're going to have lots of excess time at the end. So it is really important that you spend these five minutes checking the paper and best selecting the questions that would suit you. So it's important at the beginning that you are picking those questions and you, for example, are not doing all of the questions in section A because you'll find that you've run out of time for section B. So this five minutes at the start really is key in making sure that you are making the best decisions for you and the questions that you're going to answer. I would suggest that you leave 10 minutes at the end of the exam to check over your answers, to make sure that you've answered enough, to make sure that you haven't left anything blank and to make sure that there's nothing else you could add to any of your questions. That leaves then um, a suggested time of about 45 minutes for section A and about 90 minutes for section B. So Ag Science is a relatively new course. Um, so because of this, I suppose there hasn't been any real kind of um, definite uh, questions, I suppose, but some common questions or patterns that we have seen over the last few years is that the experiments are featuring quite heavily on the paper. There are 20 in total. Uh, we're kind of seeing at least three, maybe four or even five experiments have come up in each of the, the past few years in each paper. So the experiments are definitely something that you need to spend some time on and you need to learn. What we're seeing in the experiments is you're being asked for the method and quite often then a labelled diagram as well. Definitions, as with any science subject, are obviously really, really important. That's no different in ag. They're appearing in section A and section B. With the definitions, it's really important that you're learning those very specifically. Something that didn't come up last year but had featured for the previous few years was the catch and energy crop question. And you'll see that this is for the higher level only paper as it's a higher level only topic. It had came up as a short question in the previous few years. We didn't see it last year. So there's a possibility that this will reappear this year. You have a choice as to whether you study a catch or energy crop and you have a choice within that then which catch or energy crop you study. We've seen a big focus on the environment and sustainability in the past few years, so that will probably be no different this year. And then the last thing that we've really seen um, feature quite heavily were data analysis style questions and comprehension style questions. So they're the type of questions I suppose that you can't really learn content off for, but questions that you really need to practice. So that's where practicing your exam papers and looking through marking schemes over the next few weeks are going to be really, really important. 
if we have just a quick look then down through the course structure, the four main strands that you need to focus on over the next few weeks um, are scientific practices, soils, crops and animals. Obviously, you have your different chapters within those strands. One that quite often gets forgotten about when students are studying is scientific practices, but actually it has featured really, really heavily over the last four years. So scientific practices is definitely something that you need to um, be practicing and studying over the next few weeks, especially in those exam papers. And um, after that, then obviously soils, crops and animals have all appeared over the last few years. And then not to forget as well, these cross cutting themes around the outside of the circle you can see on the screen there. So things like health and safety, food production, nutrition, the environment and sustainability, as we've already mentioned, Policy and economics usually tends to come up um, in kind of your table and graph style questions. Breeding and genetics obviously has came up within animals and crops as well. And then this year, technology is probably going to be a big focus point on the paper. So that leads us in nicely to um, our next slide here on the project brief for this year. So the project that you have completed worth 100 marks, the brief for that project was changes in agricultural practice or advancements in technology that would lead to a more positive future in Irish agriculture. So there is just a really small um, sample of pictures here on the screen uh, that will kind of give you some idea as to what we're talking about here. But what we've seen over the last few years is the brief kind of features heavily throughout the paper in that particular year. So um, I would suggest that you are looking over any kind of changes in agricultural practices. You can see some examples there in the left hand side, things like your dribble bar, your trail and shoe, um, or maybe the use of protected urea. Again, kind of leading back to the idea of protecting the environment sustainability and um, advancements in technology then obviously really important as well it's important that you look through um, advancements in technology under three different strands under crops you can see an example up on the the right hand side of the screen maybe the use of drones in crop production and um, it's important that you look through technology in terms of animal production. So you can see in the middle of the screen there are example of a robotic parlor, milk and parlor. And then down the right hand side of the screen, not to forget as well, advancements in technology when it comes to genetics. So an example, just one example there on the screen you can see is maybe an example of sex semen. So I think that will definitely feature um, in maybe one, if not two or three different places on the paper this year. So if we take a kind of closer look then at section A and section B. For section A, we've already mentioned it is the short questions. It's the first part of your paper. You have to answer 10 out of the 12 questions here, not forgetting that you will have some options and choice within some of those questions. It's really important for section A that you know your definitions really, really important. Usually in section A, each question will kind of cover just one topic. Um, it's important when you're spending your uh, few minutes, five minutes, maybe at the start of your paper that you put a mark or a tick beside the 10 questions that you feel you are able to answer best. And it's really important as well that you don't leave any part of a question blank. If you leave a question blank, you're gonna get zero marks. If you stick something down, there's every chance that you will get some marks for that answer. Moving on then to section B, so this is the long question, that section of your paper. So um, here you need to answer four out of six questions. And again, there is some options in these questions. So just be really careful that you answer everything that is required of you here. You probably are not going to have time to answer everything here. So it is really vital that you pick the four best questions that suit you. That is not saying if you finish the paper, you obviously can go back and answer extra questions in section A and B, but I would definitely do the full requirement first before you go and answer any extra questions. So within here, what we've seen is really a big mixture of topics in all questions. Um, it's not necessarily that a question will be on one full topic. So there definitely is a nice mixture of topics here. 
Um, there has been a lot of kind of data analysis and comprehension style questions asked in section B. So things like tables, graphs, and then small reading comprehensions, and you then having to answer the questions after. So it is really important for those kind of questions that you are practicing those over the next few weeks leading up into the exam. So that means going back into your exam papers um, and practicing those questions rather than kind of say rote learning and learning off material. Again, with this section, it will be really important that you take your time at the beginning of the paper to look through what the options are in 2025 and putting a marker or a tick beside the four questions that you think best suit you and the four questions that you're going to answer. And lastly, then, just in terms of the paper, there is only a few weeks left now until your exams. So the best thing you can do to help yourself prepare for this is going back over past exam paper questions and using the marking schemes to help you answer those questions. So just in terms of being able to read those marking schemes, we can see an example of one up on the screen here. So this is an example of an experiment question that has been asked. And um, you can see on the right hand side, the marks going for that question. So you need three points at four marks each for this question. Now, that's not to say you should probably give some more information there, but this is what that question required. You can see then the array of answers that would have been accepted by the examiner in this particular year. Every time you see a forward slash, that would be accepted as a new point or a new answer. And you can see down the end as well then that there was marks awarded for a diagram also. So it really is important that you are able to read those marking schemes to help you revise over the next few weeks and get used to what the examiners are looking for um, in those marking schemes to help you best get as many marks as possible in your exam. To finish off then, um, hopefully you found this video really useful. Um, if you have, obviously um, head on over to examrevision.ie where we have complete revision packages for all subjects, okay? Um, you can use um, our discount code on the screen there to get 10% off of a package. And I'm just gonna run you through what's included in each subject revision package now. So in each packet, um, package, what you're going to get is bite-sized video tutorials, similar to this one, except on different topics within each subject. You're going to get PowerPoint presentations. We have notes then um, accompanying each of those topics. We have exam and mock paper questions accompanied by all of the marking schemes, which is going to be so, so vital over the next few weeks to help you study. Along with that, then we have quizzes for each topic, which students all often find very useful when they're trying to study and we have a reflection log as well which helps to track what you've studied and what you have left to study. You can see on the screen there are junior cycle subjects um, available and the ones that will become available in September 2025 if you know anyone doing their junior cycle this year. But more importantly for you guys, we have 21 Leaving Cert subjects fully completed with all the other subjects with exam papers and marking schemes. So hopefully everything that you are studying is on the screen there and hopefully you will be able to find some of our revision packages really, really useful in your study over the next few weeks. So I'm just going to leave you with some of our student reviews. We have over 200 five out of five star reviews from a mixture of students and teachers. They're on the screen for you to read. And again, you can see our discount code on the left hand side for 10% off of our packages. And um, thank you so much for listening. Best of luck over the next few weeks with your study and best of luck in June with your exams. Thank you.